that. Okay. <laughs> uh, you all, I'm live by accident. Hold on. I'm live by accident, Jonathan. <laughs> Hold on, I have to put this up here. It does this shit every, I have so many computer issues in my life. Whatever. Okay, hold on. Ugh. There. Okay, now we're on the... I'm plugged in. I didn't mean to hit it to go live. Hi, y'all. <laughs> I'm cracking up. Uh, and the cat does that every time. Okay, how is everybody? How is every... Okay, I'm like a bloody mess today. All right, how are you guys? How is everybody? Okay, trying not to be a freakazoid. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God, right? First time ever. How exciting. You know what? I cannot even stop the live chat because I have done everything it tells you to do online. People have emailed me and messaged me and literally I can't, I cannot slow it down. Like it's impossible. I don't understand. And I also can't add pictures on TikTok. I want to just scream. I can't even do it. I don't understand. I I mean, I can write code and stuff, but I can't do that. It's very weird. Yes, Cat Williams. It's interesting, right? Um, I am good. How are you from down under? How is it? I know I'm early because I have stuff I have to do. Michigan, Michigan, you're on time in my normal time. Look at my hair. Look at this weird flyaway hair. My hair is like cuckoo bird. Um, yeah, thank you. San Diego in the house. I'm super early because I have night plans, but my night plans are climbing up a rope. Aerial class. I have class. So I cannot miss my class because they are waiting to watch me try to climb up a rope. No, I'm kidding. It's just my class is scheduled. Yeah. Hi. What's up, y'all? Michigan. Michigan. Hamilton, Ontario. Absolutely. White Rock, Canada, where I, how come I don't know where that is? Yes, I'm super early. Yes, Cat Williams did, and I'm not in the same business as him. Yes, and you know what? I'm going to say something. This is so funny. Okay, so yeah, I'm talk about mm -hmm. Miami. I posted on the Epstein Island list, and <clears throat> it is so funny or ironic or weird or whatever how people mad dog trump trump's on it trump's on it no one said the fucker wasn't on it but look at all these other people and then they'll go and they'll defend um <clears throat> excuse me somebody like whoever on the list and go you know what they're not on there everybody who's on there is on there whether they did something or not none of us know because we weren't there however however stands to reason that they did do something. Okay. I mean, you know, um, yeah, I know the list is, I know the list is half-assed. Clinton is hilarious. Beth, Beth Clinton is hilarious. They're heckling him. I posted that the heckling Stephen Hawking. Okay. First of all, I'm going to say something that's going to offend the fuck out of everybody. Cause that's who I am. But Stephen Hawking's or Hawking. Yeah. They built him up as this, I guess, whatever, whatever he was. Okay, whatever. Um, and he was very disabled and that's very unfortunate. I kind of feel they did to him what they tried to do to Christopher Reeves to keep putting him out there publicly in that state that he was in. Oh, he was a genius. Says who? Like, I love how they all say I have a high IQ. Do not, I don't have a high, I do have a high, high enough IQ, whatever I can read. I'm saying I love how they all say that they're genius. Who's deciding this? Who put him out there like that? Because if your kid is in a wheelchair and has those issues, I guarantee you he's not getting anywhere. So who put that guy out there? Who put that guy out there? Do you see what I'm saying? I know it's offensive. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be offensive. I'm so sorry. Mm. I guess I'm offensive. <laughs> uh, you were surprised to see Michael Jackson on it. Why would you be surprised to see Michael Jackson on it? Why are you surprised to see anybody on it? Why? Yeah, okay. Okay. What? Yeah. False advertisement. Yeah. There's something up with that Stephen Hawking. He can't do anything, but he cheated on his wife. What kind of garbage is that? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Sure, sure. What did he do? He couldn't move. But I really felt that they experimented on him. I know what they said happened to him. I know that he got a progressive disease. Why do they get these progressive diseases, okay? Until he got the ALS. Oh, he had ALS. Okay, yeah, he was healthy. But he got it really young, right? Now, why do they get these diseases? Here's what, they are a bunch of vampires. You're right about that. I watched something about he was married and he was young. But the point is, isn't he the longest person to live with ALS? Like, seriously. And he's continuing to be a genius. Says who? When they tell you that this person is this, says who? Who is saying that? Who is saying that? <laughs> oh, Clinton is a road scholar, my ass. He's a road walker. He's a road whore, but he's not a road scholar. What does that even mean? Okay, I know what it means traditionally, but what does it mean? You see, they try to make you, they did keep him alive right there. There you go, the chrome. There you go. I feel, no, it's Cat Williams, not Kay Williams. Cat Williams. I think Stephen Hawking's is, I, I didn't like him. He creeped me out. His energy was whatever. And I know everybody's going to say, I, you know what? Yeah, the young blood, exactly. You know, I, I feel like people are going to, you know, get all crazy about that and call you road construction. I remember, I remember Clinton when he was in office because I'm that old. Cat Williams is a comedian. I remember Clinton when he was in office. I remember Clinton with his group of weirdos. I mean, he did jog every day and he wore booty shorts. I did appreciate that he jogged every day. I'll give him that. But he would do cocaine and jog up to McDonald's to eat French fries. And then this idiot has heart issues later on. Day! <laughs> like, dude, you're just being a jackass. Like, he was kind of fun, but presidential. No, he did with the booty shorts. He actually ran through the drive through at McDonald's. Y'all remember that? Who else remembers that? Yeah. I don't know if you remember it, but, um, yeah, no, he did. He did. And then we've got Al Gore, who's on the list. Ugly. You remember Beth? Yeah. Ugly Al Gore. Ugly. Ugly gross, lying, greedy. We got Al Gore in 2000 or 2001 or 2002. That ain't my white baby. That is a Caucasian baby. <laughs> That's Cat Williams on that clip off of that movie. That ain't my white baby. That's a Caucasian from the country of caucus. Remember he says that or something like that, right? Swollen Al Gore. Exactly. So Al Gore got caught in the Atlanta airport. I do need my mic. I have to, I have to think. I can't think. Al Gore got caught in the Atlanta airport with a briefcase. Y'all remember briefcases? Here's these men in their suits and ties with their little white shirts. Y'all are morons. Okay. Ba yeah, it's a, Sl a Slovakian baby. Exactly. This guy had a briefcase. So a briefcase that you put briefs in, I mean, not underwear briefs, but letter briefs and paperwork full of blood vials. He was absolutely stopped at security with this briefcase full of blood um, vials of blood. Now, at the time, I couldn't understand why because I wasn't that like knowledgeable at the time. 2001, I wasn't even thinking of that. I was like, what I was like, what the what is this guy? What what is this guy doing with the blood? I thought maybe, you know, he was blood transfusioning himself. I did think that like to get rid of drugs or to sell blood to do drug tests. You know, my mind goes to the criminal, right? <laughs> mm. And people are like, that's fake. It wasn't fake. I heard it on the news. I was eating. Thank you so much for that, Rosa. I was watching the news when that happened. Oh, I know. I know what it is. It's, it's, it's Chrome. Now, getting back to Stephen Hawking's that I got to look at that guy's picture. So, yeah, Chromebook. Chromebook. Stephen Hawking's. Christopher Reeves. Now, I've told you the Christopher Reeves story ad nauseum. I'm sorry. I only have so many stories for my little life here. But I was pregnant with Keith and working at NBC. And Christopher Reeves let me. He was leaning against the wall. And he, he let me go into the bathroom before him because I was like this. And I was on. Uh, where was I? 
I was over next to the night tonight show and he was on the tonight show and you share the same bathroom. Anyway, I get into the bathroom and I'm so excited. I'm like, I'm going to pee. I'm going to pee. Cause that's all I do is run for places to pee. And, um, so I'm in there and then I get like pee shy, right? Pee shy because I'm like, great. Superman's outside. And he fucking was married. Wait, K. Willie. Oh yeah. No, not K. Willie. <laughs> I'm talking about Cat Williams. I don't think I said K, but if I did, I meant Cat Williams. Um, but anyway, Christopher Reeves, and then he had the accident. Now, he was a big, tall guy. What I will say, I I, I know, I know. I was like, oh, my God, I can't pee. Superman's going to hear me. And then I was like, oh, God, you're going to pee down your pants. Just pee. Um, oh, I wrote K. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I meant Cat. I get so many typos because I'm always in a rush because that's just what I do. Anyway. Christopher Reeves, they paraded him around like they wanted us to get used to the idea with he was good looking. He was very um statuesque and he was he rode horses. And I think when you're that tall, six foot five, I think um you are if you hit the ground, it might be harder because it's like that. Yeah, thank you for telling me that. It's like I've got to switch the God. Anyway, uh I feel like Christopher Reeves was paraded around us so that we would donate money to technology to help him, which is fine, move or pretend to move or pretend to walk in a technology way while taking the consciousness of the person. Do you see what I'm saying? I feel like he was the beginning of that. Uh, now here's, let's see. Hi, how are you guys? That's how I felt about it at the time. I was like, why do they keep pushing this poor man in front of us publicly? Why do they keep saying they're making breakthroughs and stimulating? Nothing stimulate, stimulated him. When you break God's creation, which is your body, um, that's, you know, whatever, that's just going to be whatever it is. Right. Um, I did put Kay Williams. What a dumbass I am. Dumb ass. Okay, so let me day, 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 let me change it, y'all. Okay, so she's like, who the fuck is Kay Williams? <laughs> Sorry, that just struck me. It's funny. Oh God. Right? What is wrong with Sloan today? Sloan be crazy. Okay, cat. I don't even know how to. I'm trying to edit this. Oh. Trying to edit. Okay, skip. Let's see. Oh, I've got to go in. I, I'll have to wait to edit it. Whatever. I'll edit it later. Anyway, duh, what a dumbass. I was like, who the fuck is gay? <laughs> okay, so anyway. Now, why are all these people? Look at Selma Blair. Look at the girl from The Sopranos. Look at Christina Applegate. Look at all of these people that suddenly are getting... Um, MS and all of these diseases. And then we have stiff person syndrome with Celine Dion. And why? Now, let's just say these people aren't, you know, all partaking in stupid shit that they're not supposed to be partaking in. Although I do believe Celine was, but mm, they're poisoning our food. I find it reprehensible that people still eat at McDonald's. What are you doing? What are you doing? It isn't food. So what are they putting in this? What kind of chemical is causing that? Too many kids have problems. Yes, yes. Valerie, thank you for saying it for me. You're getting the gist of where I'm going. That's what I think they're doing. I don't think they knowingly all are doing that. But why do you think that that's even a thing in our society that that would be acceptable? I heard David Soul died. Uh, Soylent pink and green. Exactly. Um, so I really go on TikTok for Cat Williams. Yeah, I don't do make, no, I don't either. I, I feel like we have been sold a bill of goods and then we are an experiment. Okay. Yes. His wife died right after. Yeah. I remember that. I remember she had lung cancer and she didn't even smoke, which was weird. Um, whenever I get, yeah, I just don't know what they're putting in the food. So it's really safe to say that none of us know what we're actually eating, even when it's packaged, because they're lying to us. They're actually lying to us. They, and 
parents of children who go to McDonald's should be sued. How about that one? How about with the obesity and shit, if you've got a fat kid, no offense to the kid in the car, you get hauled out of that car and held accountable for making your kid like that because you are the one making your kid like that. Oh my God, don't yell at me. I can hear it already. I also think it's tainted blood. Yes, grow your own food if you can. Grow your own food if you can. People, people. Now, Miami. Now I'm going to say something crazy. I did a TikTok, TikTok, and I, I, I literally need education on how to add things on my TikTok. Like I'm trying to do what it says to do, and I'm even trying to do what it says to do on this that everyone tells me I can't do it. I, I don't have anyone but me. I don't, you know, I'm just me. I have a web guy. But he doesn't do that stuff for me. He just does what he does. But anyway, Miami. They want us to think those are the Nephilim giants and all of that. It is true. It is child abuse. I mean, yes, it is true. But people don't want to say that, right? People don't want to say that. They never want to say that. They want to say, oh, you're crazy. What I say to that now is, uh, yeah, I fucking told you so. Anyway, Miami. So Project Bluebeam, I know you guys know this. I know you know this. Project Bluebeam. That's the first thing, okay? Don't eat anything. Project Bluebeam. The second thing, the second thing is the Nephilim giants. That's what they think they are. But ask yourself, they're trying to convince us, they're trying to convince us that they shut down Miami, the um, air traffic controllers, the, you know, whatever. They're trying to tell us that. So I don't even know what to say to that, except, yeah, that's some bullshit. What I think is going on, I do think it's Project Bluebeam where they're going to try to convince us it's aliens. It's kind of like um, War of the Worlds back in the day, like in the 40s when, was it Orson Welles that came up? Or was that the 50s? Whenever it was, when they came on the air and said, we're getting attacked by aliens and all the people believed it. Like, they've been fucking with us for years. Fucking with us. Fucking with us. Fuckery. Okay? Fuckery. Don't listen to these people. What needs to happen is the government needs to be run by people who do not have millions of dollars and have not been on TV. I hear that that clown, The Rock, is going up. The Rock. It was Orson Welles. Yeah. I hear that The Rock is going up so that he can run for president. <laughs> no. Because you're an actor, you scumbag. And you and Oprah Winfrey went to Hawaii and tried to... Don't be disappointed, Clarissa. Don't... I hope I said that right. Don't be disappointed. You don't know these people. Pay attention to the people you know. When you understand, I'm ashamed of myself as a person. Like, literally, I hate myself at this point. Because, okay, I don't fully hate myself, but I hate myself for when my kids were younger that I tried to get into an industry that's full of wicked, evil people. And that I thought, like you guys think, that if you are a, look what they call themselves. They're a star. They're a celebrity. Let's give ourselves award shows with fake gold idols so that we so that we can applaud ourselves because we are stars and you people are garbage. We live with hundreds of millions of dollars as I'm spitting and you bitches, you're not even going to feed your kids. You're not going to feed your kids. You're going to get nothing and we're supposed to listen to you. I bring up Julia Roberts again. Asshole Julia Roberts. Yes, she's an asshole. Dr. Fauci. Oh my God, you're such a hero. What is wrong with you, lady? What is wrong with you? Shut the fuck up. And don't put your medical shit public on my camera because that's a HIPAA law. Don't do that. Don't do that. Lapis. You use lapis for migraines. I would use lapis for migraines. Why did she do that? Why did she do that? Who the fuck is she? Shut up, you stupid bitch. And I mean that. How dare you indoctrinate people into doing something physical? I don't care if she's male or female, what kind of, but you're right. What kind of clown is she? I think they're all bad people. Lapis for the thyroid, the throat area. Absolutely. I think they're all bad people. The Rock and Oprah 
stood there with missing kids, which they haven't found, by the way. No one questions that. The governor of Hawaii, that guy, let's pull his name up because I can't keep all of this. That guy should be thrown out of politics. Get out of politics, you bitch, because you're not doing what your job is. How many kids are missing? Oh, I don't know. Okay, well, he's not lying because he doesn't know which ones were stolen and which ones are missing. He's a bitch and he has no business running a country. No business at all. What a bitch. And Oprah's like, and Dwayne, is it Dwayne Johnson, The Rock? Anyway, they're like, yeah, we're going to give away $10 million. Oprah, you bitch, you have 250 whatever, half a billion dollars, and you're giving away 10 million? Wow, <laughs> aren't you fucking special? And the wording was, because I listened to it, we're going to give one person $10 million. How much do you want to make a bet at somebody she knows? And The Rock, fuck off, buddy. Boycott his movies. Boycott, no, it's even more sinister than Langer. Fuck them, where are the kids? Where are the kids? Okay, hold on. Hawaii, what is he, the governor? Josh Green. Is it Josh Green, the governor of Hawaii? Okay, yeah, not that guy, that other guy. Okay, uh, I guess it's Josh Green, but that wasn't the guy I saw talking. Anyway, Josh Green, you pile of shit, why aren't you doing something? Yeah, Happy New Year, you garbage buster. Yeah, anyway, these people, absolutely, there was no water, no warning. The fires were deliberately set. If you think that's an accident, you're mentally ill and you need to go fucking educate yourself. It's obvious, okay? It's obvious. The Rock should be canceled. The Rock should be canceled. Canceled. Oprah, canceled. Don't listen to these people. Don't listen to them. It was definitely... Um, Sonar, lasers, something. Where are the kids? 1,200 of them. Where are these families? How dare How dare we allow this? But you know when we allowed this before? When did we... Uh, that guy, Vince, whatever. That guy. Yeah. You know when we allowed this before? Oh, that's right. That's right. The native people. California, America, Canada. We tried to assimilate them. We put them onto reservations. They Do you realize the bullshit they say about Native? And I'm going to use the word Indian because that's how I was raised. I'm sick of political correct, but Native people to the land, which I'm meaning Indian background of all the different tribes in America, North America, Canada, and whatever. Here, here's what I'm going to ask you. Why do we believe they're not Aboriginal? That's actually Australian. And I know what they say in Canada, but that was Australian. I can't say Aboriginal. That's a different... It's just different. This is for Australia. But I'm just going to say native or Indian, how I was raised. And if you want to come after me, maybe you should go after people that do shit with kids before you come after me for talking like a fucking normal person. Anyway, say native. Okay, there you go. Um, Was bad. Yeah, Canada. No, they, they, they stole these kids from their families, put them into uh, orphanages, state-run schools with the C Irish Catholic Church, by the way, in Canada. They cut their hair off, okay? They dress them in whitey's clothes. Who are these fucking people? And, and, then they said, oh, well, for reparations, let's give you land that you can't build on, that there's nothing there, not build houses for you, not make a nice, like, city streets through your reservations. Let's give you alcohol, fuck your heads up, and then tell people that you're more susceptible to alcoholism. You're more susceptible to alcoholism because the government made you crazy, okay? Crazy, that's why. That's why you're more susceptible to alcoholism because you're a battered group of people by a bunch of fucking idiots, okay? Idiots. The queen, I'm speaking of Canada now because I'm Canadian. The fucking bitch that died in England and her cowardly clan of ugly ass people. And they're ugly because they're not human, okay? Oh, I know, I know, I'm crazy. Mm -mm. Human beings have a light to them. Those people don't have a light. Now, that woman, along with the priest, the men that run around in robes, they want that. They want to make that normal though, wear a fucking dress. As Cat Williams said, these bitches are wearing dresses on camera. Do you know how much they mock women? Okay, do you know how much they mock women? 
They mock us. They make men us. They put men in the White House, Barbara Bush. They put men in the White House, feed us in a jar. Men in the White House dressed as women. That's the shit that they do because they fucking hate women. You know why? Because we can have children and they want to abort our children. They want to eat the flesh. They want to steal the blood, the parts and sell it and try to create it. But they don't want women to be women. They want us to look like men. They want us to be men. Now they want us to share our bathroom with men. Fuck that. Fuck you. I'm peeing in the parking lots. That's my mission this year. I will pee in every single parking lot that I go into. And if you catch me on the camera, I hope you like my ass as I'm hitting it on the way out the door. I mean, seriously. But Queen Lizard, and good she's dead. She's a bad human being, okay? She's a bad, and she's not human. She's a bad bot, right? She needs her lights punched out. That bitch and those people, those people, okay? Those, oh, they're coming after us. That's what this electricity bullshit is. I'm weak. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mm. I have to sip my tea or I'll go insane. Anyway, I've had so much coffee, I might go crazy. So now I'm drinking tea to calm my ass down. But when you look at native people in North America, do you realize what's been done to them? And I don't hear two fucking words about it. I don't hear anything. Marlon Brando and that idiot in Yellowstone or whatever, um, Costner and Dancing with Wolves, that guy. Um, I snapped, I've lost my mind. Why? Would we listen to a government that says Native American people have a different... Do you know what that's saying? They're saying that their genetic structure is so different they can't handle alcohol. Well, I got news for you. Most people can't. It's what they used to run cars with. So it's what they used to run cars with, okay? So the thing for 2024, if this isn't even 2024 yet, who knows? It's probably the 1700s. We're, we're so lied to. It's such garbage. Yes, I know. Brian Coomby. Was it Brian Coomby? And he died. Well, I'm sorry. Suddenly he caught tuberculosis on his way to Belgium to testify against Queen Elizabeth in the abduction of those kids from Kamloops where they found the bodies. But hey, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. Uh-huh. Sure. Okay. People got to stop. People got to actually say to our government, Nancy Pelosi. I'm sorry. I can't stop. Something's happened to me today. Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi. Okay. Do you know how much money she made in office and you're trying to tell me that she didn't do insider trading? That woman needs to be removed. All of them. If you're a celebrity, The Rock, Arnold, the idiot Schwarzenegger who fucks his maid and then has a kid. Like, what are you doing, dude? Like, why do we want to even know that? How, why do I even want to know that you're fucking the help? Because you're a control freak. And you're, you're, you, what, your wife's such a bitch? Then divorce her, you asshole. Who wants to listen to you? You're garbage, okay? I mean, good that you got the kid. That's good. That it's not the kid's fault. But you, you fuck the rest of your family up. I, I uh, whatever. Okay, these people, these people, okay, they should not be running for president. Biden is a lifer, okay? He's a crime family lifer. And why, why does not one person, because it's all about orange man bad, orange man bad, orange man bad's kids didn't accuse him of, you know, touching him and molesting him. However, Biden's daughter did, and I believe her name is Ashley, and I believe that she ended up in rehab as a sex addict, and we all know Hunter Biden. Like, if you don't know what Hunter Biden's doing, I don't know what to say to you. I don't know what to say to you. If you're going to defend with your right to vote that because you want to be on the winning side of something, you, you shouldn't have the right to vote, really. There's something fucking wrong with you. These people need to be voted out and normal people in, and there's very few normal people, but people who maybe make a modest living, and it's a really high living, but let's say 300000 a year, and they cannot prostitute and make money like Pelosi did from investments while they're in office and no more than a five-year term or a four-year term. I met Orange Man three times. Did you? Yeah. Joe had a shot. Yes, exactly. Yeah, no, I know, but we shouldn't allow it. Like, what, what, where's, where's our freedom spirit? Why don't we get a, why can't we get a fucking group of people together? Why can't we get a group of people together, stand there and say, get out, you fucking tax stealing, lying sacks of shit? 
Why can't we say that? Oh, what, I'm supposed to actually go vote for these people? Really, 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 really. Okay, uh-huh. Do you know, somebody I know, I, I posted something and I said something like, I told you so about the COVID vaccines. <laughs> I lost a lot of friends because they're cowards. They're afraid to die. I don't care. Like, if you're afraid to die, don't tell me what to put in my body. Unless you're going to stop herpes. Because you know none of you motherfuckers are wearing goddamn uh, condoms. You know that. You know everybody out fucking everybody else's husband not wearing protection. But you want me to wear a mask that, they, that it says on the box will not stop the transmission of viral uh, whatever. You want me to do that because I'm what? Stupid? I mean, what? I mean, what? Okay, so, yeah, magnum condoms. <laughs> but I'm saying, people don't even use them. Start worrying about that. Start worrying about your public toilet seats. And do you realize, okay, it's lucky I've got good thighs that can crack fucking nuts on my thighs. And I don't mean guys nuts. I mean, like, walnuts and shit. But my thighs are strong. Do you know, they want you to go into the bathrooms where they took all your taxpayer money and they're like, yeah, put that paper sheet on the toilet. Oh, so you want me to take a paper thing out of a thing that everybody with their period hands and their poop hands and their piss hands touch, and you want me to put it on a toilet seat where their fucking asses have been because it's going to what? What is it going to do? What's it going to stop from jumping on me? Nothing. That's why I squat when I'm peeing in public. That's why I squat because... But do you know what they got you doing? Oh, this little thing is going to this is gonna stop the germs. No, it's not. No, it the fuck isn't. And by the way, the door handle in the bathroom, that tap on the sink, the, uh, shut up. Oh, and by the way, turn that blow dryer hand thing on. Blow all that crap right in your face. Because you dumb. Yeah, we all dumb. Anyway, I can't. I just can't. I can't. I can't. That's why I'm peeing in parking lots. I squat. I literally squat. Okay, sorry. I'm on a rant. Anyway, Miami, I, I did a TikTok on this, but Miami can be one of two things. Project Blue Beam, the Nephilim Giants, okay? So when you look at somebody like Shaquille O'Neal at six foot nine and people that are seven feet tall, those are probably from that lineage history, right? I'm thinking. But in Miami, what I think is happening, okay, I think they're making up shit too. But what I think is happening, because the veil is broken, so they cannot use their glamour magic. So what's glamour magic? Or enchantment magic? Um, it is a way of manipulating energy in order to Make yourself appear a certain way. So the way that they make you appear is how we look at these celebrities like they're great. Like, oh, Oprah's great. Oprah's great. Yeah, I'm not saying your ex wasn't sweet. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying Shaquille O'Neal and those kind of things. Um, I'm wondering if they're from that lineage in history because they are so tall. But yeah, the the... The veil is now broken. They cannot use our human. I'm going to use the word human. They cannot use our human energy to hide behind. Now, if you understand what you see when you see a demon. So let's look at people that conjure up genies and gens. Look at cartoons because they're pretty real to life. So if you look at a cartoon of a genie or a gen, right? And you look at that. You're looking at the lamp, you rub the lamp, and this huge, gigantic genie pops out, and there you are. You're a little person, and this huge entity comes out of that lamp. What do you think a demonic presence is? What do you think that that is? That's what we're talking about. So, yeah, but it's huge. So, if you cannot hide behind human beings using energetic manipulation, a form of glamour magic, chaos magic, um, black magic, hoodoo voodoo, santeria, plain old white magic. I don't care what you call it, but this is actually glamour magic. It's what women do, and you fucking know you do it, you some of you women. It's what they do when they want a guy, when they take the man's hair, they put their period 
blood in their food. Men never take cookies from a woman when you're dating several because one of them will put period blood in your shit. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fucking fact, okay? I've heard it too much. No, no, no. No, no, no with the period blood. <laughs> yeah. So when they do that, they are they are wicked, I'm saying. I mean, fuck, who does that? Um, that's a form of magic. I mean, it is. It just, it is. I know it's gross, but I'm, if it, I, don't eat from other people. Don't eat. Yeah, why do you think Charles said he wished he was a tampon? Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. But understand in the spaghetti, exactly. Understand that what you're seeing is when you have demonic or angelic or the presence of whatever. When you have the presence of, look at this, hair's gone bananas. The presence of an entity around you and that entity needs to hide because if you saw it, just think of, I've talked about this, the beast and the beauty and the beast, the ugly beast, like that. If you saw that, you're not going to go near it. So it hides behind a human nature with the facade of human in order to gain access to the consciousness that we have. And that's the next thing they're coming after is our consciousness, which is what I was talking about with Christopher Reeves and talking about with Stephen Hawking and other people. Now, why are so many people being debilitated suddenly with MS? Like suddenly everybody's getting MS. Everybody. Why? What do they all have in common? They're probably eating poison food. I'll leave it up for you to, to figure out what kind of poison food. Yeah, that's probably what they're doing. Yeah, they're leaving. Yeah, they're, that's what they're doing. So they want to utilize our essence, our energy. Yes, period blood. It's a form of magic, glamour magic. It's a form of magic that women use to conjure up energy in order to manipulate your man, their man, somebody's man to come to you. This is what these people do. This is what they're doing when they're doing concerts they are taking your energy because you've got five semen magic too oh, uh. okay i read that in the manda um eric and lyle mendez and by the way their parents should be dead if you're going to sodomize and rape your kid and you're going to be the wife and shut the fuck up because you have money you both should be dead i mean i'm sorry is that really a crime do those kids not get to protect themselves or we're just supposed to what let them bend over. That poor kid, I, I listened to his interview, that poor kid said his friends told him to put cinnamon in his dad's coffee and cinnamon and everything. So, and he did it because his dad would make him suck his dick and then he didn't want to taste the semen because it was, ugh, obviously. If women don't like that all the time, like, anyway, right? So I'm serious. And those people have been in jail since 98 or 96, something like that. Why? 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 If you're going to sodomize me as a kid and I choose to blow your brains out, isn't that self-defense? Isn't that self-defense? And where's my mother? She needs to get shot too because why isn't she protecting me? She's not. Fuck her too. So any child that's been sexually abused where the mother turns a blind eye because the mother is greedy needy, obsessed, selfish, and prostitutes her kid out because she can't be bothered to speak up because she likes her lifestyle, loser, then maybe you gonna get the repercussions of it. Unfortunately, those kids went to jail and maybe they should have gone for five years or something, but 30 years. And then I just, yeah, I don't know. And I don't know. I can't, I can't. I'm gonna go off. I'm gonna go off. You sodomize a kid, you, you, Fucking you need to go to, you need, you need to leave the planet. Oh, they do it. Because, first of all, I think they were born into a ritualized family. So I believe that this is family. A ri the reason a lot of these families, like Ghislaine Maxwell, like she doesn't think that it's bad. You know, like she won't apologize and she's just a fucking asshole. Is because they're raised in those families where they do fuck their parents and they fuck their children. That's kind of like the picture I saw of Tom Brady, right? Like, what is that? Do you see that picture? Look up Tom Brady kissing his 11-year-old son. Uh -huh. 
It's very indicative of Will Smith and th that wacky family. And I was just thinking of, yes, Tom Brady, correct. Look it up online. You can see it for yourself. Ask me if that's normal. I don't know. When my kids were 11, they're like, don't kiss me on the lips. I wasn't trying to kiss them on the lips, but they didn't even want to be seen with me because I embarrassed them. Just saying. I mean, you could hug your kid and shit, but yes, okay, narcissism, narcissism, a demonic spirit. Spirit, why you want to fuck your kids for? How dare you do that? Justin Bieber, Justin, I yeah, Justin Bieber, I don't know. It is, of course it's weird, and <laughs> it's weird. Oh, don't judge him, he's Tom Brady. He throws a ball across the field, huh? Why is that guy, oh my God, you're fucking brilliant. You throw a football. Do you see what we've become? Do you see what we've become? Look what we've become. We need to stop watching TV. We need to show up at the um, voting poll centers and demand change that we don't vote for these people. Not any one of these people they're throwing out or any other person that's coming up. If they've got a billion dollars, unfortunately, that Vivek guy, I saw him in a vision. I don't think we should vote for him, but... He's also a billionaire and he ran a pharmaceutical company. Out you go, dude. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, Cat Williams, okay? Cat Williams. Now, here's where I get stuck on this. I really like his energy. But the same thing with, um, oh God, what's his name? The British sex addict that was married to Katie. Uh, oh my God, married to Katy Perry. What the hell is his name? him okay anyway um I never yeah why would you want your kid to kiss you on the mouth <laughs> Russell Brand I feel like there's a certain amount of controlled opposition they will speak the truth and he says he's not sold out so okay I'll take him at his word but I watched a Larry King interview so Google Cat Williams and Larry King and I changed my mind slightly because he did a missionary in Haiti. And as soon as they say fucking Haiti, I'm like, oh God, here we go with Haiti again. So I just, you know, I get nervous when they say Haiti because it's all about the brown skin babies. And then he adopted six children. So, I mean, I'm not going to judge him. I'm not going to judge him for that. Although I do think adoption is wrong. Don't yell at me. I'm adopted. Don't fucking yell at me. Um, I think adoption is child stealing. Georgia Tan in Tennessee, all of those kids, she just fucking took them to make money. Five grand a kid and sold them. The Catholic Church just robbed unwed mothers. What the heck? Yeah, he did the missionary. Yeah, he said he did that. I know. I, I hear you. I worry about anybody. Sean Penn, I don't care. I worry about anybody who's hanging out in Taurus. Yes, in Taurus. <laughs> I worry about Tauruses. I worry about anybody that's hanging out in Haiti. Having said that, having said that, everything he says is accurate. Ask yourself. And why black men would put up with this? Now, I did like when he said Tyler Perry could never be a, be a man on camera. So he had to be a woman. But why do they put black men in dresses? What What is that? Like, as a black man, you should say no. You should say no to the mockery of your people. But see, those people are greedy for the money. That's why they do it. That's why they do it. He's not lying about it, right? He's not He's not lying about it. But why do they have to mock women? Are you threatened by women, you bunch of bitch-ass men? Are you producers and directors threatened by women? Because you can't... Oh, yeah, they bleach their hair out, too. You're right about that. They do that. So they try to assimilate them into white culture. I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can do, I talk about whatever I want, but I'm talking about everything I said, I think. You can do whatever you want with your body. I mean, I put tattoos on my body and I was never going to put tattoos on my body, but I did. Um, so yeah, I, I know it's humiliation ritual. I worry when anyone goes to Haiti. As soon as I hear Haiti, I know that energetically what they're doing. Now, what I wanted to read here, I have to look it up to read it. Yeah, the blonde hair is a ritual. I, I wanted to, oh yes, I love doing this. I'm just going to give you the example of Haiti, okay? 
So we have Rain Wilson from The Office. And y'all know I've been spouting off about this for fucking years, okay? For fucking years. So this guy says, what, this is his own tweet. Rain Wilson owns a nonprofit Haitian charity for children. This bitch, yes, Rain Wilson, you a bitch, okay? You a bitch. He writes, what about human baby meat? Retweet what I should eat for dinner. I'm thinking pasta. I'm sorry, do you have a non-profit in Haiti for saving children and you do that? That's what the fuck you do? I mean, what? What? Just, I want that to register in your fucking head, okay? Then, uh, how many clowns, let's see, how many clowns does it take to screw in a light bulb? This is on his tweets. 12, one to screw it in and 11 to kidnap and chew on human babies. What is wrong with you, you fuck? What is wrong with you, you fuck? And if you are going to come at me for repeating what he fuck, okay, I'll read it again. Here's what this bitch said. It's a joke. He put joke. I've saved these all on a hard drive and they're in multiple places because they keep scrubbing the internet. How many clowns does it take to screw in a light bulb? 12. One to screw it in and 11 to kidnap and chew on human babies. Because that's normal. We should pay him millions of dollars to have a TV show where he influences people. And people give him awards. Fucking bitch. Anyway, yeah, I know, right? It is like Pizzagate. Then we have Chrissy Bitch-Ass Tegan. Chrissy Bitch-Ass Tegan, okay? And her fucking weirdo husband. I get yelled at. I And this was posted in 2013. So you understand Pizzagate came out in 2016. This bitch posted, I'm going to jail over pizza. Really, Chrissy? See you next Tuesday, Tegan? Okay, and then she writes, seeing little girls do the splits half naked. I just want to put myself in jail. Toddlers and tiaras. Really? Really? And you walk in public. You walk in fucking public. And people come after me and you for telling them this. I'm not the one that wrote the tweet and neither are you. Right? Right. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, seriously. Okay. Now, Pizzagate. Now, <laughs> Tupac was probably gay. Sure. Why wouldn't he be gay? They're all gay, right? They have all sleep with men. So, mm -hmm. yes. For him to get where he was and then they murdered him, probably. But, I mean, you know, that's up to him whether he wants to do that. Yeah, they're not walking in public for long. So, now, here's another question with that. Speaking of Pizzagate, just to reiterate, Pizzagate was brought up after the WikiLeaks because of all of the references to pizza, okay? the references to pizza in the DNC records, like 60,000 emails and everybody's like, do you want pizza? Do you want this? Do you want blah, 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 all of that, right? So she's a lady boy. Um, anyway, so uh, Comet Ping Pong Pizza was the pizza restaurant that was like a taxi hub or a central station where they dispatched what it is you want. I call it much like back in the 80s when I worked in the strip clubs underage, of course, when the bartenders would get the girls, waitresses to sell the heroin packets, they would put them under the drink orders and they'd put a tab there with a bunch of matches and then you knew which table to drop the heroin packets at. Drug dealing, okay? So the bar was a front for the drug dealing that went on behind the scenes. There was the strippers, there was the hookers, and then there was that. That's, Exactly. 
what is going on with Comet Ping Pong Pizza. And let's not forget James Alephantis, written up as man of the year. For what? For what, bitch, in Washington? For what? Right. Hi, Ashley. Um, so James Alephantis had a picture of a child with butt beads around its neck and a price tag on his uh, Instagram because that's normal and no one bats an eye at that. That's normal. So Pizzagate was distracted and they made people think that some lunatic said they were holding children in the basement. No, it's a taxi hub or it's like a switchboard to get your information, right? Oh, uh. now I'm going to one up you on that even. Remember Ellen DeGeneres, that degenerate pile of crap? What did she do when she hosted the Oscars? What did that bitch do? And yeah, my mouth is terrible and I apologize, but I can't help it. It's the new year. It's swearing season is on. Let's just look and see what year that Ellen Ugly DeGeneres hosted the Oscars. Ellen DeGeneres Oscars. Okay, I think, it, uh, there you go. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. I just want to show you why you know it is swearing season. <laughs> okay, let's see. Yeah, 2014. So this bitch dresses a man, dresses a gay. She comes out all smart and all mocky like with a tray of pizza. And then she got the Brad Pitt sitting there and she's like, yeah, what do you want, boy? You know, do you want pepperoni or do you want this? And somebody's like, I'll take four. They are mocking us. It was 2016 that Pizzagate came out or 2017. Whenever they, they Julian Assange, WikiLeaks, all of that. It was after that. This bitch did it in 2014. That should tell you there's a reason. You have to look at the reason. They do not like you. Why do you think the Oscars are there? It is false idolship of people. False. There are awards for themselves by themselves. They monopolize the entire world. They put movies out there as, as um, just bullshit you to tell you what to do. It's just crap. It's crap. Don't do it. Don't listen to them anymore. Don't do it. And believe me, no one's more disheartened than me. I love Marilyn. I love Lenny. I love Dalvis. But I can't. I can't. I can't. You know I love Ozzy. I just, I can't. I can not. If you like pizza and you are doing these things, I can't do it with you. Uh, yeah, they love adopting black children. And there's a reason for that. Brown skin babies and the melanin. Now, last night, oh my God, I flipped out flipped out, okay, flipped the fuck out, somebody sent me this cup from Palm Springs, yeah, and I love it, um, it's my favorite one, I put everything in it, smoothies, coffee, whatever, anyway, think about this, the, really, think about this, what was I gonna say, I'm crazy, and can't think of it, okay, uh, <laughs> no, I want you to really think about this, so, we have, People literally, I don't know what's good in celebrity world. There's nothing good in it. They shouldn't, oh, black children, thank you. They shouldn't be celebrities, period. They are not better than you. They do not deserve pay. Okay, the processing of children and the drinking of what goes through the physical body. So let's look at this in terms of a different way. Let's look at this in forms of, if you understand this, conjuring up energy. So let's say there was a drug that would make you super skinny, right? Super skinny, like you were not overweight and you could eat all the pizza you wanted, drink all the booze you wanted, do whatever you wanted, eat all the declares you wanted. You could do all of that because like you would never gain weight. Let's say it took 10 years off your appearance and made you so pretty, right? Because they have something against aging. But the reason they have something against aging is they don't actually cross over out of their physical bodies. So let you can eat cake all day long. So let's say you found out that if you drain the liquid out of a child, that you could have all of these things. 
That's what they're doing. That's correct. That's what they're doing. They have no boundaries and they're so vile. They're so afraid that they don't want to look old. That's why they have all of these idiot women pumping their faces up with shit, looking like garbage, garbage. So I'm watching something on TikTok and it's from, uh, okay, I can't think of the woman. Um, Angela Bassett and Lady Gaga. That's who it is. So it's Angela Bassett. It's uh, that hotel, whatever that show is. Anyway, they're on there. And so they're both witches or whatever. And so Lady Gaga's blah, blah, blah into Angela Bassett. And she looks at her and she says, yeah, they think it's normal. It's their religion. So it's them against us. It's them against us. It's them, non-human, against human. Okay, that's what it is. Eat coven, thank you. And she says, she says, oh my God, I never liked fighting you or they talk about the blood drinking, the eating of the flesh. And then she goes, and you, you are the finest thing with your walnut sauce. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? The word walnut sauce is in the DNC leaked WikiLeaks emails. Why are your politicians using that word? For what reason? For, <clears throat> their God is Satan, correct? Yes. And they, and, but that's why they have to stay young because they can't die. So when they're stuck in a repeat cycle here, black skin, walnut sauce, children of color is right in your face. It's right in your face. If you now, I don't know what the melanin does. John asked me that the other night. I don't have an answer for that. Maybe somebody out here does. Obama had his, yes, his white out pizza. Fuck, dude, you're getting $60,000 worth of hot dogs and pizza, you bitch. You have that chef. Oh, that's right, he died. He drowned, even though he was a swimmer. You see, you see what they do, Alan Dershowitz. Yeah, dude. And here's my question. Some lunatic is threatening me again on, on um, he's gay. Obama, yeah, everybody knows that. So some weirdos like these people didn't do anything. They just went to the island. <laughs> okay, that's great. Because in 2008, Jeffrey Epstein was in jail for pedophilia. So why are you going to hang out with a known predator? Why are you doing that? What is wrong with you that you're doing that? What, what are you doing? Why you be doing that? Yeah. Why? That's all. I want to know why. I know I'm a bitch for asking, but, you know, I don't know. And Michael, do you see what they do is they, sick willy, what, <laughs> slick willy. <laughs> what they do is they push these women on us with these blowfish face and these fucked up, blow up doll lips. They hate women. They hate us. Women are naturally powerful. Women, we are naturally powerful. We don't have to be thin. We don't have to be fat. We don't have to be anything. We can create human beings. They hate us. That's why, oh, I mentioned Naomi Campbell on my, um, she's on the list. I mentioned her. She's also on the black diamond thing from Africa where she took that blood diamond uh, on my Instagram and somebody tagged her and they're like, you're going to get sued. Here's what I'm going to tell you. First off, if you're a public figure, people can say things, especially when they're written about in the newspaper. I didn't make the list up. I did not make the list up. The list exists. The lists exist. I did not do that. I did not do that. Didn't do it. So when you, yes, anybody can sue anybody for anything in the fucking world. I am Seth Green going back to Isaac Cappy. I am being sued because I did a radio show in 2019 before my doodleberry died. A radio show called Ground Zero with, um, 
Clyde Lewis. And I remember in April of 2021, John and I went to Arizona and we went to the motel where Isaac Cappy met with a woman named Tracy Twyman. Tracy Twyman, she's a public figure. She did a friend of mine's movie, Bloodline. She's a, a she's an authority on child trafficking, satanic ritual, aliens, abduction, anything in the paranormal, metaphysical, satanic ritual. Anyway, she was a co-host of that radio show. I want you to hear the absurdity of this. She was a co-host. She's a public figure. She wrote like 16 um, novels, books, whatever, um, reference papers, <clears throat> excuse me. And she was friends with Clyde Lewis, who was the host of Ground Zero radio show. So I went on the show five days after she died. Now, keep in mind, this woman, this woman was somebody who told people, I'm not suicidal, as did Isaac Cappy. I'm not suicidal, as does, you know, uh, what's his name? Katy Perry's hu husband. I just forgot his name again. Anyway, uh, uh, whatever his name is, God, Russell Brand. So all of these people say they're not suicidal. Like, they're like, I'm not suicidal. Okay, that's fair enough. Somehow they all end up doing something, right? Anyway, so Tracy Twyman ends up doing exactly what she said she wasn't going to do. So Sloan goes on the radio show and talks about what she picks up energetically five days after Miss Twyman passed. Now, I was called and asked to go on the show. It's not like I looked for them and sought them out, all right? Um... So no straight man's going to dance ballet. <laughs> I just saw that. That's funny. So I'm like, okay. And the transcript, I did not know that she was married. I had no idea. I did know that she had an 11 year old son, but I basically knew nothing about her. Really. I more focused on Isaac Pappy. So I did that radio show. I go on my Keithy passes away. I do stuff looking up about Kite Cappy. I was more focused on him because Seth Green was what, what did it. And I know Cappy's not lying. Do you know why I know Cappy's not lying? Because when he talks about going to Seth Green's house and them talking about chicken, when I grew up in the strip clubs, the chicken hawks came in with the young boys. That is the actual term for it. So... When he found out about that, he spoke it. In the sex industry, it's normal. The chicken hawks pimp out underage boys, two usually married men. That's usually how it works. On the hooker tracks, on the hooker tracks, okay, like outside where the hookers are, it's main, yes, chicken hawk, pimp for young boys. So when Cappy's talking about that, about Seth Green and chicken, young boys, and he's bringing it up, then I'm focused on that part of it. I'm focused on Sarah Ruth Ashcroft and, you know, all that. Not so much Tracy Twyman. But after she passed in 2021 in April, we went to Arizona and I went, hi, Bobby, thank you for that. And we went to, yeah, chicken in the, it is. I was 14 in the strip clubs. If you, there was a chicken, our bouncer, who was this really flamboyantly gay man, okay, he told me all about it because he tried to pick up my young boyfriends at the time. He was a seamstress and all of that. And he was like bald. Anyway, he had his eyes on any, okay, any whatever. Anyway, long story short, we went to Arizona. We went to this restaurant. And the reason I noticed this restaurant, I just was driving into Flagstaff. And the restaurant, when you walked in, had these beautiful selenite, um, uh, chandeliers, huge chandeliers with selenites. Yes, the campground, correct. So I minced words a bit. Like I, I filmed the, the bridge that Cappy jumped off of. And now you're right next to the Grand Canyon. So like if you're going to take your own life by jumping off of something, I don't know, the Grand Canyon's like making a statement. But no, he, this little bridge going from the Grand Canyon to, uh, is Bell, Bellevue, Washington, uh, Bellevue, Arizona, by the Navy base, by the way. So I was just basically talking and you know me, I'll mix up words and facts and all that shit. So long story short, they call me from the radio show and they're like, you're on the Sue documents. So I'm being sued 
And here's what you don't do. And I'm just going to give you a lesson on this. I'm getting sued. You guys can all look it up. It's with Al Bustiani versus Sloan Bella versus 40 other fucking people. Anyway, this lawsuit, because anybody can sue for fucking anything. But you have to prove your point. And I didn't have any goddamn intention of doing anything. And I didn't even know she was married. But all of that aside, don't pay for a lawyer. Maybe pay $500, get some words, do whatever. Don't pay for it because they paper you in order to, Diddy, Diddy said he's suing you next. Then he can fuck off too. He's the one getting sued. I can't help it. I can't help it. You can sue all you want. And you can't really sue when you're actually what I said is happening. Like, what are you suing for? That's what she said. That's what she said. Yeah, it's a frivolous lawsuit. But here's what I did. I figured out how to respond pro per or pro se. Bobby helped me a lot. But I figured out how to respond without employing a lawyer. Okay? The reason I didn't want to employ a lawyer is because they want to bankrupt you. And I had shit to do with my son, Keith. You do not get to pro per and yeah, pro se. But you don't get to, <laughs> boo diddy, you don't get to bankrupt me. I'm not, and I was going through a divorce at the time too. I was being bankrupted in different ways. But you don't get, you cannot, you can sue, but you have to prove it's not true and you have to prove the intent behind it. I didn't have any intent. So there were five charges against me or five, five points in this lawsuit against me personally. And the points, um, four of them were thrown out. So I answered the points and explained my position. I think you're better off just saying, unless you're in jail and arrested, then you need a lawyer. But, or they frame you for something. But I think you're better off just causes of action. Thank you. See, I don't even know what I'm fucking talking about. And I went into court. The other lawyer said, oh, you can find somebody who will help you for free. No, bitch. Because when you get a lawyer involved on behalf of you, you can only communicate in legalese. If you're pro se, there's a lot more latitude because you don't know what the fuck you're doing. So that's why I chose that because you can say things and you're not going to get thrown out of the court. I mean, I'm sure if you say like really weird things, yes. But if you're just trying to illustrate your point in lay terms, yeah, there's a different way of seeing it, right? So here's the thing. I think what you should do is respond to an initial lawsuit, whatever, Okay, initial lawsuit, what, whatever the response is, you must respond, even if it's a paragraph in writing, that I first emailed and sent a registered receipt, right? I mean, to the court, to the judge. And you respond, and then you should just say, I'll see you in court. Like, I'll see you in court. When the lawsuit shows up in court, I will show up and speak on my behalf. Why am I going to pay money which some of them have paid 20000 and I'm sure upwards, because you threatened to take my house. You're not going to take my fucking house. I have to go to court first. I have to go to court first. You have to get a judgment. You can't do that just because you say it, and I have to run to a lawyer here. Now, if you're in jail on a murder charge, entirely different thing. So I just did it like that. And I used something called the anti-slap law. So I just researched and all of my people that are very smart, like Bobby, who's a PI and is in court all the time, I asked them, you know, for terms. And then I read stuff and I tried to answer. I looked at the code that they were charging me with. I mean, I'm sure I sound idiotic in the court. I'm not going to deny that. Judge probably rolls his eyes and goes, oh, we got one of them. The point is, if you're going to sue me, I'm not going to lose my income responding to you. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it. So you are going to get countersued back in small claims court. Yeah, it's of course, it, I mean, it's intimidation. Exactly. I uh, can't slap them. In. <laughs> no, it's an anti-slap. It means like alternative radio and entertainment. The, the anti-slap, they can't sue. You have to look up the law. I can't even remember it. I don't even care. Anyway, apparently next month is a lawsuit. So I'm so curious. Up until then, I've been getting, like, I'm so curious. Do I have to fly to Portland? It's in the Ninth Circuit Court. Like, get a life, okay? I had no intention of doing anything. I know. So, way back when we were we were there, John and I were there, we took pictures. That's when it happened. Then I got gang-stalked, 
Okay, then I got gang stalked. Gang stalked, Bobby knows who I'm talking. I'm not even gonna mention his name. But the last people to spend time with Isaac Cappy and their cult started doing four hour long videos about me, calling me all kinds of fucking weird names, calling me horse face and shit. That's the only thing I remember. Anything else, I don't fucking remember. It's like, have you looked at yourself in the mirror before you talk about me? Make sure you get a close up of your motherfucking self. Anyway, they started gang stalking, right? Um, yeah, you always show up in court. Yeah, of course, you always show up in court. Yeah, no, they were gang stalking me. And I, I answered the court. They, I didn't have to show up in court to begin with. You have to answer, you have to answer the complaint. I always do that. Like always do that. Okay. I do that. Um, but I'm not going to cop to something I didn't do. I actually got a letter in the mail saying that the plaintiff wants us to pay his legal fees. Dude, dude, I'm not the one suing frivolously. I didn't do anything. I absolutely am not paying your legal fees. So I had to answer that one. No, I disagree with this. Why would I pay your fucking legal fees? I'm not the one that hired your lawyer. You want us to defend ourselves with my children and grandchildren's money, right? And take away from my family because I don't make that much money compared to you, you bitch. And you want me to pay your legal fees to sue people for shit, for what? For what? For having an opinion? And I don't think Jeffrey Epstein killed himself either. Just so we're clear. I don't think so. Okay, same thing. What, I'm not allowed an opinion? I'm not allowed an opinion. I mean, what? are you even talking about? Absolutely not having it. Well, I know he didn't do what they said he did. I mean, give me a break. Ridiculous. So I'm entitled to an opinion. If you don't like what I said on an alternative radio show when I'm a psychic and I get feelings and impressions, you're going to have to talk to God about that. Okay? Because I operate the way I do. I feel things. I say them. Do I ever claim to be right? Do I ever say I'm 100%? No, I just get what I get. Take it or leave it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I get feelings. I feel things. And I tell radio show hosts, this is what I feel. This is what I hear in my head. I hear fucking voices. And look up the definition of clairvoyant, clairaudience, psychic. Do all of that. Look it all up. Do that, but don't come after me with paying your legal fees after you come at me with frivolity and stupidity because you want to pay out. Suing me for like $200,000, it's not going to happen. So back at you, buddy, back at you. And then everybody's afraid. Oh, I'm afraid I got to hire a lawyer. If you're in jail for murder, yes, but no. And I was like, he's like... I was like, you can't get it. I'm in the middle of a divorce. Like the divorce goes first because like that was already happening before you decide to get your panties in a twist. Oh, they that's what I'm saying. When they threaten to sue you, anybody can sue for anything. Anybody. That's why Jimmy Kimmel is threatening to sue um, Aaron Rodgers. I'm threatening. Then do it, bitch. If you think that he's lying against you and you're like Carol Burnett and you have actual real fucking proof that that guy is making up shit for no reason and you're not on that list because you know you're not on that list then go ahead and sue jimmy baby kimball do it do it do it wow i know he was on the island what's he gonna say he's threatening to oh oh oh, oh my god uh, i i uh, uh, uh. shut up shut up Shut up. Shut we and, and the legal system needs to be completely, completely redirected. Completely. It is such garbage. You will not win in court for any reason. So why pay a lawyer? Just go the fuck into court and tell a judge, dude, this is what I like literally. This is it. This is it. This is all I got. I did or I didn't do this. That's it. Oh, Steve Bing, I happen to know backstory on that. I had a client that used to sleep with him. Okay, Steve Bing, TikTok, TikTok. What are we going to say? How are we going to word this? So I had a client back in the day. My client back in the day was a lovely young woman that identified as a woman but was actually born as a male. 
and she was taken all over the world for large amounts of money uh, because of her unusual body, boobies and a penis, which you know men in Hollywood love. They love that. They don't love their wives, but they love that. Anyway, this particular young woman who was rather young, like, um, no, I'm not a water sign. <laughs> I have three planets in Cancer, but I'm a triple Leo. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, but I can get Steve Bing, correct. And he, right, exactly. He used to take this young woman who was in her 20s at the time. I had several clients like this, by the way, just so you don't. Oh, you're triple Cancer. How great. We're, yes, how great. Leo baby, yeah, roar, roar. <laughs> I don't have any roar left in me. <laughs> um, I don't care anymore. Like, I'm sorry. I just, I have to say it. I just once Keith died, I don't care. Like, I don't care what I say. Yeah, I don't care. Um, anyway, this young woman who was my client, she would fly to European countries to service people in Dubai, all over the UK, all over whichever countries, and she was real pretty. My neighbors thought that, like, I was a lesbian prostitute with the, <laughs> with the amount of this that was coming in and out of my front door, okay? My neighbors literally had no idea what I did. They were like, who are these fucking people coming to the door? They would see famous people, non-famous people, men dress as women, women dress as men, and everybody in between. And sometimes animals were brought into the house, so horses outside, doggies brought in, cats on the shoulder, cats in a bag, dogs in a bag. My neighbors thought I was literally fucking everything, right? Anyway, my kids knew who was what and whatever. So this young woman used to have sex with Mr. Bing, according to her, and several others. And he would pay large sums of money. Like for a couple of days, it can be 10 grand. It can be 10 grand to go to Dubai. It can be... That's just the, was the going thing. And I'm talking back in the 2000s. Anyway, if you think, if you think that he jumped off that building, you're absolutely out of your mind. He was break dancing and slipped off the building while somebody was break dancing into his back. That's what happened. They took him out. He probably tried to double cross somebody. I don't really know what happened, but he did not jump off that building. I'm saying it again. Here I am saying it again. Okay. Yeah, that's what happens. Anyway, <laughs> I, can't, I can't stop. I've lost my mind, but that's what I feel. Okay. Yes, they're, 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 that's how they get in. What we don't understand Okay, yeah, someone break danced onto his back. That's what happened. <laughs> and, and he flew down 27, 20. Star Whackers, I told you that story. Star Whackers is really interesting because my friend, Marina Anderson, not Marina Abramovic, okay, people can have the same fucking first name. Marina Anderson, third or fourth wife of David Carradine, who is a friend of mine, very gifted, intuitive, all of those things. Lovely woman, okay, lovely known her for years, 20 something years, probably more. Anyway, she was in that circle of people. And when her husband, ex-husband David died, she called me. Now I picked up, yes, yeah, Steve Bing, not Chandler. <laughs> Chandler Bing is a character. Anyway, she really felt horrible about that. Thank you for that. She felt so horrible about what happened to him on that morning when she got the news, she called me. So Anyway, she was with him when he, she managed him back into Kill Bill, into that uh, movie, franchise, into that. That's when she was with him. And then I met her when she was divorcing him. But she's great. Anyhow, she's, you know, conscientious. Yes, they did. But see, here's the thing. Understand this. When you're young in Hollywood, and he came from a family, Illuminati family, in my opinion, from what I picked up. So when you have a predisposition sexually to express yourself in a weird way. Porn, think of Army Hammer, think of porn, think of autoerotic sex, think of all of those things. Think of crack, think of cocaine, think of alcohol. Think of doing all of those things in your young years because you are um, indoctrinated through family cycles or whatever. And then what an easy way to take you out. 
oh my god look at you you fucking did that look what you did look he died of drugs he hung himself he did this he did that he's a drug addict he's a drug addict and they can point the finger and none of us question it because this dude has a history of la 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 all the way down or she has a history of la 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 all the way down here's the trick here's the trick you must listen to me i don't know how i knew this i was probably murdered in my last life i don't know how i knew this but as a kid I knew the government wants you on drugs. I knew that. I knew that if you have any kind of power, and I was on them for like three years, maybe a little more in high school, but not really, but about three good years, okay? I was a lunatic on LSD. Quit by the time I was 20. Quit everything. Didn't need to go into adulthood with it. Just quit it. But if you are not, see, keep the body your temple. Your body is your temple. If you are addicted to anything, they will use it to kill you if you are strong and you have a voice. If you work for a corporation and you point out a negative, they'll say, he drank himself, his liver shut down, his wife, he was gay, he snorts paint, he eats crack, whatever, you know, whatever it is. He stabbed himself in the face with a pencil, whatever. Yes, the hot shots. Yeah, the hot shots. They will do that. Why do they do it? It's an easy out for them. I don't give you an easy out. I'm sober. I'm not on any medicine. I don't do, I learned. But see, I grew up in a psychotic weirdo family. People who were addicts, people who were sexually abusive, and I know, I know that they fucking twist shit. Because I watched what they did with the alcoholics in my family and how they scapegoated them. Then I watched with the drug addicts because of those issues. Um, I don't really, I can't really remember the whole thing, but she left and, but she was still a good friend and cared about them and a kind person. She's a very kind person. But ask yourself in your family, who do we blame? The drug addict. They're on drugs. They're on drugs. Yeah, I, <laughs> right? <laughs> they're on drugs. Look, they're a drug addict. They relapsed. Such an easy thing to say. Such an easy fucking thing to say. Do not give them that. Stay in your power. And your power, which is weird because I'm not necessarily a God pusher, but when God says your body is your temple, when your body is your temple, you are, pre pre you are protected by the source because you're not cluttered. Demons aren't in you. You're not cluttered. This is also if you keep yourself, you know, from spreading your legs out in people's beds or whatever, but you are not a demon. Oh, they may find a way, but nobody's going to believe I overdosed. Okay. If they try to come and kill me, they're not going to believe I fucking overdosed. They are not. Yes. My adopted family. I was raised by an adopted family. They're not going to believe I overdosed. No one's going to believe my liver shut down from smoking or drinking or fucking vaping. Stop vaping you all. Don't you understand if the government puts it on the, yes, yeah, stop smoking weed. They put the, they put the thingies in the weed, uh, car, not carcinogens, um, stuff that makes your brain crazy. Okay. Stuff that makes your brain crazy. So don't let them do it. If I end up dead like that, they're going to be like, no, if I kill myself, you know, I'm not going to, I would have taken my life after my son died. If I were going to do that, I would have done it the week after. And it was all I could do not to do it, except I was so fucking furious with what happened that my rage kept me going, okay? So there's absolutely no fucking way, okay, that I'm going to do that. So if they tried to say, oh, she kills herself because she said, no, no, bitch, I'm here to be like a, like a fucking herpy on your life, okay? <laughs> No, I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going to shut up. So if they say that, it's a lie. Okay, overdose on vitamins. I don't even take those anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's so ridiculous. So don't give them a way out. Look what they do. I listened to an athlete on TikTok and I thought, boy, you're clever. He was in his 30s. He was in his 30s and he, I don't know who he is, forgive me. He said he used to be a drinker and like a domestic violence and all of that kind of a athlete. And I don't know if he was like basketball or football, but he was one of them. I can't keep him straight. Anyway, I mean, I don't know what people do. So 
anyway, he says they wanted to give him an award. And he said he got sober because he said the way that they take you out is they will give you an award and they may drug your drink and they may do this and they may do that and then say, oh, look, he went home and fell asleep after he got the award. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, I mentioned my son like a crazy person because it pisses me off so much that I can't even fucking deal with it. The aliens in the Miami mall, remember, they're unleashing Project Blue Beam. Blue Beam. Go read about that. Project Blue Beam. I'm just looking at the time so I know when I got to get out. Project Blue Beam is about the pretend alien invasion, okay? The pretend alien invasion. However, I also feel there's glamour magic that's being exposed. So I am not sure whether everything they saw was part really demonic through the veil and then part of their, yeah, I know, Beth, thank you for that. Project Blue Beam is part of it. But also understand, also understand, they really blocked off a lot of that. So, it's not entirely what they say, but don't believe anything the government says. Anyway, back to this story. So I'm literally on Instagram and I'm posting about telling people like, you know, for all you fuckers that said whatever shit about the COVID, I told you, I put, I told you so. That's my motto. I fucking told those island boys are possessed. Um, look what, why, you know, go back and listen to black music or rap music or you know, um, traditionally black music, go back and listen to it. Go back and listen to reggae. They talk about political stuff. They talk about this. They talk about that. But now you have the gangster rap. What is the point in that? Why that? Anyway, um, so I wrote that. I told you so with the COVID thing, right? Someone on my page is like, well, I'm so grateful for the shot. I want you guys to hear the thinking of the American people. You're entitled to think what you want. And if that's the way you want to think about it, then that's your business. But this person was saying, you know, it saved my life, the shot. Okay, that's nice. I got long COVID. This is what she said. I got long COVID and then I took the shot and the booster and it saved me. Impossible. Impossible. Do your research. What is wrong? No. And I want you to look up in your city, whatever city it's now I'm getting an eye twitch again, whatever city you live in. Okay. Look at it. it's twitching. Oh my God. Stop. Anyway, whatever city you live in, I want you literally, they're probably holograms. I want you to look up your health ministers. If you live in Chicago, look up the health minister. If you live in uh, Michigan, can you believe in Michigan, they're telling you to get the shot but they want you to drink the tap water? What? Clean your water up in Michigan, you bunch of motherfuckers, before you tell anybody. <laughs> I get a twitch when I get agitated. Then you know I'm going to throw some fists. I'm kidding. There's no way to throw fists with. Um, they don't clean up the water. Look at your health ministers. Look, go and pull up pictures of the health representatives of your state, your country. And ask yourself, why on God's fucking earth you would listen to people that look like that? Um, health looks healthy. Just remember that. Health looks healthy. Health looks healthy. Health is healthy. Health, no, I don't listen to Abraham Hicks. I'm aware of who she is going back like 30, 40 years ago. But I don't listen anymore because I don't believe we co-create. Stop with that gaslighting bullshit. And they are walk-ins. Yes. Okay, so here's the thing. When the new age community tells you, you are what you think, I'm going to say this. Is the five-year-old child, like those call, that Colorado mother who murdered a six and an eight-year-old or whatever it was, are those children creating that? No, the fuck they're not. Is that stupid TikTok woman or that, that woman with the kids, um, I can't think of her name, the woman in the cult, the Mormon cult, when she abuses them, Lisa, yes, yes, that. Okay, so literally, caffeine fatigue. Okay, well, then I have caffeine fatigue and I'm eye twitching. Anyway, like you are not a co-creator. You do not have that kind. Frankie, yes, that one. You do not have that kind of control. The fact that they want you to think you have control. Ruby Frankie, thank you. You think those kids created that shit? Do you think those kids did that? 
Are they what they think? Why would anybody say that to anybody? You are what the fuck you think. Shut up. You do not co-create. You do need to keep a positive attitude, but you do not cause, you are not responsible for anybody that comes into your life, domestic violence, or better yet, being a baby adopted into an addicted, sexually abusive family. You didn't create that. Shut up, new age people. You did not. I know. It's so fucking ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Just because you want it does not mean it's going to happen. Okay? You do not create that. You can create your response. Okay? Well, yes, do nothing without intention. But when when you're a child in an orphanage, which I was, and I spent a year, the first year of my life in there, did I fucking create my family in there? Did I cause that? Or was I under the control of the person who gave birth to me who decided to ditch my ass in that place and take off because she didn't want to be responsible for me? Which is it? Do I have complete control? Like I'm, I'm responsible for what I think? Nah, 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 nah. Bullshit. We have free will in how we respond. No child is free willing it to get raped or murdered out there. Think clearly. Think clearly. <laughs> Think critically. You have free will in your response. When you have a boyfriend that's domestically violent with you, you can fight back. You can fight back. That can be your free will. You can call the police. I've done all of these things, okay? I've, I've had my ass kicked so much that I thought it was normal to punch me in the face and tell me you love me, okay? I had to walk myself out of that. However, I've called the police. I called the police on my parents. I've called the police on my boyfriends. I've done that. I'm talking as a teenager. So I also don't choose to be treated that way. Now, when someone comes at me like that, okay? Yes, Illuminati is real. Absolutely. When someone comes out at me like that, I can cry. I can run in another room. I can move out. I can do all kinds of things. But you also have to understand your free will is only as good as the emotional in awareness of what you understand at the time, okay? So if you don't understand what's happening to you and you're a child, such as Gypsy Rose Blanchard, I think is her name, if you don't, if you're a child and you're being dominated and abused to that level and you don't understand, then you don't understand. So you are not willing that in. You are in a bondage. I mean, like, what? No, the Menendez brothers, they, what were they, 14 and 16 when they murdered their family? So, like, they use their free will. And any of you fuckers telling them they shouldn't have shot their parents are crazy. They use their free will to protect themselves. <laughs> to protect themselves. Correct. We've been caught in a glitch. We are actually glitched. I don't believe in soul contracts. Just please, born into slavery, thank you. Just please, you may want to think you have power. You may want to think that. People are like, I would do this, I would do this. No, I watch my kid dead on the ground. You ain't got no power, okay? Any mother of a dead child, any father of a dead child, you've got no power. Nothing you say is going to change that. Nothing you do with a drug addict kid, if you have a drug addict kid, is going to stop them from going out and taking a pill and dying of fentanyl if that's what happens. Cocaine sniffing, nothing. Getting on a motorbike, nothing. Your kid ain't going to listen to you. You have no fucking control. You can educate and you can articulate, but you don't have that kind of control. I mean, a lot of new age is like, you can control everything. No, the fuck you can't. No, you, your power is with God. That is the only power, your mom is correct. The only power you have is with God. I had to get on my knees and pray for my child. Okay, 21 and 18. Good, they took their parents out. Their parents fucking deserved it. And good for them. <laughs> I have had a near-death experience, yes. My guide was right there. I had to get on my knees when Keith died. And I had to beg God to take my son. Beg, please take my son and keep him safe. Because even doing the work I do, and as much as I know about it for you, when my child died, it's a whole other fucking story. I had to really rethink my faith and decide if I had that faith. 
I had that faith. That is what kept me going. And my beautiful friends who helped me. I had to beg God. I prayed that Keith left this planet. Now, my biggest fear, and you want to know my biggest fear, which sounds crazy. Here's my biggest, and trolls are bitches. Trolls, you be jealous bitches. Here's my biggest fear. I thought, I want Keith to be out of this reincarnation loop. And I hope he made it out, okay, out of the loop to another planet, another place, another dimension, okay? Yes, 99% recovery rate from COVID. So let's inject ourselves because the government says, the fuck, you got free will, say no. They tell you they're going to cut your money off, say do it, bitch, and then sue them later on. You have to understand you have the right to say no to what goes into your body or it's rape by a needle. Anyway, um, now I worry that I'll get caught in in the loop of reincarnation and I won't see Keithy. You see what I'm saying? I get afraid of that. That's my fear now. I never had that fear before. But when he died, I'm like, what if he goes on and I can't find him over there? I hope I can find him over there. Um, I have to just think that way. I don't have control over anything. I had no control over anything. I didn't even have control over what the fuck came out of my mouth when he died, okay? My friends had to listen to me. My friends literally came to me. And I will tell you this too. One of my friends, I hadn't talked to her since our kids were 14 because they got in a bunch of trouble and whatever. I stopped talking to her, several of them actually. And they came right to my side and have stuck by my side. So those are friends. But nobody knows really what goes on because we don't even know what direction we go on when we when we die. Now, my stepson has always come to me, but and he came to get Keith. But I don't really know. I don't trust anything we're told. I don't even trust myself at what I do anymore, really. I just have to pray to God that it comes through. I hate anybody who's lost a child, but I know I didn't fucking co-create it. I know that. What does that mean? You can co-create your life. What a bunch of garbage. I will say it again. I'm not, well, if she believes that, that's fine. I'm not even going to insult her like that. But I hope so. Thank you all for that. But when you look at it, like, are people in Bangladesh or Ethiopia who are starving or Haiti that don't get food, are they co-creating their life? Or did somebody hijack those areas energetically and control what happens there and enslave a group of people like in sweatshops? So I think it is all a lie. <laughs> I'm convinced it's all a fucking lie. That's what I say. I've, I've seen my stepson. I saw what happened to him when he died. I felt him come through. Um, he showed me how he died. My own son, well, you know, he came to the chair and he made his face and all of that. But it's just like soul contracts. Ask yourself that. I'm telling you, I know who I am as a person on a soul level. I know who I am. Okay, I know. Yes, I, I want to stay. <laughs> I, I want to step out of the loop. Please help me out of the fucking loop. Um, I feel like a fruit loop in the loop. But so let me get this right. I'm on the other side and they try to tell you, oh yeah, you picked this life. No, I didn't. There's some truth to picking your parents, maybe from a choice that you have over there, but how they react when they get here gets all discombobulated and it's all kinds of like garbage. This life is so uncomfortable and so painful that I can't even understand. You have free will in your response. Nothing here is free will. You, I mean, you have free will. I said no to the COVID shot. I speak about it and I get punished. What kind of free will is that? What is that? You couldn't walk out of the concentration camps, could you? Could you? During World War II, could you just get up and walk out of there? What free will did you have? Oh, not to get on there to begin with and get shot in the face right there. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know who Esther's channeling. She says a group of higher consciousness beings. So I'm going to take her at her word for what she does. I don't think she's a liar and I think she helps people. If you can get information from people that help you, then that's great. No, karma doesn't explain anything because you're looking at karma tit for tat. So now you're telling me that I was some kind of fuckery in the last life, some kind of fucking bitch. And so my karma made me come here and lose two kids, okay, two of them, 
get my ass kicked by pretty much every man I've ever been around, okay? Grew up in a home where I was sexually abused with alcoholism in the home, called names, disinherited and homeless, <laughs> born into an orphanage. But I picked that because I did what in my past life? What did I do? And if I did indeed do something that warranted all of that, okay, and my story is hardly, hardly as bad as things I've heard, but if I did do all of that to deserve that, then what the hell happens to Charles Manson when he comes back? I'm just curious. Or Hillary Clinton. What happens to her? Yeah, I don't see it that way because I see those people continuing. And why am I coming back here to a life when I was such an evil troll in a past life <laughs> that I'm going to be punished like that? Because I do look at it as punishment. I look at it as punishment when you take my peace. Okay, I look at that as punishment. When I see kids on drugs, punishment. So it didn't evolve me. I hate this planet and I hate the human race <laughs> at this point. But I'm just asking you, I have no memory of it. So if I have no memory of it, then I'm like a three-year-old getting my ass kicked for, so I, why? Do you see what I'm saying? A three-year-old that gets raped and murdered. What did that kid do? What did that little kid do to come here and have some drug addict mother sell them out? What, what? Yeah, I think we are recycled back. I do think that. I do think we're caught. It's, it's something I'm not understanding. I don't, there's moments of slight, minuscule, happiness. And that would be me giving birth to my children and my children. That would be about, I'm, I'm Christian. I believe in Jesus. If you want to call that Christian, I've never been to church in my life, except in, in slight group settings, maybe five times in my life. Have I been into a church? I do go into churches for funerals. Obviously, if you have a funeral and you go wherever, I mean, wherever it is, yes. But I did not have my son's funeral in a church. I had it in a park and I had it with nature and I cremated him and then I tattooed him on me. So my belief is definitely in Jesus. Absolutely believe he was a light worker. I also like the Buddhist belief in the lack of, re or do the Buddhists believe in reincarnation or not reincarnation? I can't remember. I like all of the light working people, but I believe in Jesus I don't believe in any man-made church that makes human beings go into a building to listen to a human tell them what to do. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I was raised by an agnostic atheist who told me there is no God. So I knew it in my heart and have always had it. So, you know, um, like that. And I don't think any of us actually know what happens. So anybody who tells you they're 100% sure of what happens <laughs> is full of shit because you don't know what happens. Neither do I. You can know some things from near death, but that's not everybody's experience either, right? No middleman needed. No middleman needed. No. And definitely not taking your money and taking up the best, best land and all the kind and doing all of that. Absolutely not. I like Dolores Cannon. Oh, Hinduism and Buddhism doesn't. I don't think we're supposed to be here. I used to think that. I used to think that, but don't think it anymore. Yes, you can be fooled by tricksters as well. You can be fooled by everything. That's why I was like so freaked out that I was not there when my son actually left his body, pushing him to, to not go into the light. And to get out of the reincarnation cycle, I went insane knowing that he was already dead. And there, and trust me, when your loved one dies and that body is there, it is literally empty. He had no scent. I, I sniffed my child. Sniffed him. to see, And I can't even breathe anymore. I, I believe Jesus is real. I sniffed my Keithy. I sniffed him. I looked in his mouth. His eyes were half open. I couldn't see him. I couldn't smell him. He had a distinct, I know the smell of my kids. I know what my kids smell like. Could not smell him. He was gone. And I, I just, I just couldn't, he, his essence was gone. My Keithy was gone. And yeah, you watch them and they leave. They leave. And so 
Yeah, well, I I thought he was beautiful. I loved him in his death. I did not like seeing how broken his body was. It was very broken. Um, is Mew here? There she is. She's looking for dinner. But his energy wasn't there. And then I felt, you guys are so, no, you guys, I talk about it all the time. I sound like a nut, but really it's how I process it. Um, yes, they're gone. And and when we had the, that's Keithy, Bobby painted Keithy. And I don't know, I can't, tell me if you painted the younger version. These, these were on my, um, you know, when you go to the funeral and you give out everything about Keithy or, or your person, those were the two pictures. And so I love my paintings of him. But he really wasn't there. So you holding on to the body, they're like not there. They're so gone. They're just, they're out of there. So it was an experience that I handled. And I saw him on the ground. The police, of course, don't want you to see that. And they try to stop your emotional expression. You are going to freak out. You are going to freak out. You are going to go insane when you see that. You will go insane. Jason had the exact same response I did. And they want you to calm down. I don't want to fucking calm down. I don't want to hear what you have to say because that's my child. So you fucking deal when your child dies. I'll fucking deal with the, the way I see that, right? So I wanted to be near my son's body. I wanted to touch him. I did not care how broken his body was. That's my child. That's what I, so I have seen every aspect. At first, I hired someone to take pictures of his body in the morgue because the coroners don't give me those pictures. I mean, maybe if you're going to court or something, they do. I don't know. I can't remember how that's worded. So I hired someone to take his pictures because I didn't know what happened to him. And then I, it took me three years to get the body cam footage and I saw the body. I saw everything, everything that was broken. His intestines were out. His leg was amputated. I saw everything. I don't have an issue with seeing that because he wasn't there, okay? He was out of the physical before that. So it makes me feel better knowing exactly what happened because so many people that were witnesses, I mean, at different parts of the accident, told me different things, okay? But, but, I, but when they tell you, you don't know because you don't see. I had to have a visual reference. I have to see it so that I don't make up the shit in my mind about what happened. Okay, that's that was me. I had to see it. And so I did. And that's what I chose to do. And so, yeah. Anyway, that was just what I needed to do. I handled every aspect of his death like I did his birth. So as a mother and as a parent, I would assume you would want to do that. I didn't cry one ounce. I not like I burst into tears, obviously, when he was there and had a nervous breakdown. And then I just remember shutting down. And so I couldn't think. Um, I couldn't think correctly, but I thought with rage. I was fucking infuriated. Fucking infuriated. Pissed off. Fucking rageful. Okay. Unbelievably pissed off. The level of rage, the level of fucking rage was, I was, was, I don't even know what to say. I just wanted to kill somebody. So I did everything I could and I would sleep in my car and I would sleep on my bathroom floor and I would sleep on the wood floor and I would sleep off the bed on the couch. I slept everywhere, but in the bed because I had, I mean, I'm, you're going to be angry. Anything you feel is correct. Well, it's interesting. Cat Williams is talking the truth. Yeah, I completely disassociate. I haven't come back. He wasn't hit as in we haven't found um, a car that hit him. That's why I had the pictures taken. I found, if anybody ever needs a forensic photographer, I found one of three in North America and she happened to be in Glendale. So I was really lucky. A retired LAPD gave me her number and that's what she does. She's a French woman. And I believe her name was Marie Claire. Anyway, she was very nice. She went in. She took the pictures for me. She put them on a disc for me. And I've never looked at that disc. Um, she told me what she described and what she saw from the best. And she used to work with LAPD so and other police stations. So I did that. If anybody ever needs that, I have her. But 
what happened is we are looking for, okay, so one of the witnesses, we'll just call him biker guy. One of the witnesses, his camera was on, but he wouldn't give it to us. So uh, he said it over repeated. I don't believe that. But he also didn't see the entire accident because he did not mention what I have on tape. He mentioned part of it, but he didn't mention the car that pulled out in front of Keith. I have that from another neighbor. So I know there's some misconstruing there. The police officers blamed it on my son, of course. They do that a lot. You can never touch a coroner's report. They said my Keithy was five foot nine and then told me that people make up shit on their driver's license. My son was 6'4". I am 5'6". You can see when we're standing. I mean, please. Anyway, uh, I can't I can't even go there. Uh, the same year. There you go. Oh, my God, Cora. Yes. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Two in the same year. I can't, I can't even fucking understand that. I can't fucking understand that. So I am currently looking for two witnesses. I put a TikTok up about those people who walked Keith's road scene. I need to talk to them because I need to wonder where they came from, who they are, what they saw. That's what I need to know. That's the next thing I need to know. I just need to know it. I want you to understand too, when people do things, they can jump at you like this and it can cause you to back up and fall off, a, uh, off stairs. You understand? So sometimes people cause things. In the beginning of the accident is the car that pulled out on San Jose. I'm so sorry. Yes, Cora, for your loss. I don't even know what... She knows. She knows. It's a psychotic feeling. It's just fucking psychotic. Yeah, they can attack. They can attack your loved ones. And they can do it by having randoms who are mind controllable. Just do that stuff to last month. Oh my God. If he's involved, listen, that's a spiritual attack. Two car accidents. Be very careful. Tell him, say, I'm going to tell you to tell your nephew the same fucking things. If you, I should put a billboard up there. They think I'm completely fucking crazy. The cops think I'm a loser. They try to gaslight me. They try to say stupid shit. They, you know, they're like, your son was on drugs. And I'm like, yeah, no, he had the residue on it. They want to read the coroner's report. I got another report. I've had to counteract every fucking thing they said because they wanted, I just, I can't. I just can't with them. They did enough of a job to try to find out, but I was told by another LAPD police officer that that first car is the beginning of the accident. It causes Keith to move out of the way, period, end of conversation. And th that should be addressed. Where are those people? Okay. Oh, illnesses. Oh, Cora, I'm so sorry. I, I just, prayers for Cora. She lost both of her children in a different way to accidents. I mean, to, sorry, illness that she has no control over. As a person, she has no control. Um, I think Mew is three. Three. I think, I think Paige, let's see. No, it was the year after Keith died. So she's two in a bit. Um, yeah, silly goose. We're investigating. We're, we're, we're looking. I need to find those people. The gang stalking is so heavy. If you say anything truthful, they don't want you to speak. Sometimes they just want to be chaos causers for no reason. Sometimes they may want to do that. It's just two lists, one for clients and one for victims. But yes, exactly. Clients and victims. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yes, I did. I talked about Cat Williams. He's telling the truth about everything he says. He's telling the truth. He's telling the truth. I should put a billboard up. <laughs> um, I should do that, huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, gang stalking, you know it. My ne I, they, whoever the person was that just said their nephew's been in two accidents, listen, that's a serious thing. Keith got hit and killed on his motorbike and the next day Jason got hit on his motorbike and I was in the emergency room with Jason less than 12 hours later. Some dumb woman in Burbank ran, ran over the side of his leg and his foot and another lady had to come help him because that lady with the car, she refused to see him and she refused to move off of him. He was stopped at a stoplight. So they came for both my kids. Then baby Jack got hit by a car. And then we had to have a surgery and you guys helped with that. Baby Jack's hip and leg was broken in three spots like Keith's. And then Keith's best friend Lucas was waterboarding in Arizona and he broke 
his leg and in the exact same three spots as Keith and had to be airlifted out of Arizona. So his mom had to go get him from Arizona or wherever she picked him up at whatever hospital and he had to be airlifted. So that was Keith's best friend, Jason's dog, Jason and Keith, all in a 24 hour time frame. Boom, 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 just like that. So I was in the hospital with Jason, but it was just, um, it was an emergency uh, thing in um, Burbank right after Keith, like 12 hours later, I was like, I, I, the fuck, his foot was flattened and his ankle was flattened like that. And thank God, n nothing more serious, but they tried it with him. And it was a woman that was wearing a mask because you got to be a fucking idiot to drive in a car wearing a fucking mask. I'm just going to say, and Jason said, you know, she was an older woman and he's literally banging on the hood of her car. She pulled up right beside him, ran over the right side of his leg down from the hip, would not move. And then another lady behind, I mean, seriously, wouldn't acknowledge. See, that's mind controlled, probably on meds, whatever. Right. And then baby Jack, Poor little baby Jack right out right out the gate and hit. And what was he, six months old? Poor little guy was on the floor. And Kenna and I, she didn't even stop. No, she didn't even fucking stop. No, and the lady helped Jason. And then, you know, I went, John was sick as shit and could hardly function. He had he sleeper agent vibes. Exactly. And then after, so that week after, y'all remember the story. MK altered exactly. Dumb as a brick, stupid bitch. That's why they, I, I just, I can't. So Jason, the doctor said it wasn't broken, but everything was fucking flattened. I mean, so Jason and I parked at the house. Baby Jack was a puppy, he was six months old. And thank God we asked for, for um, GoFundMe and y'all helped him get the surgery because they took him to a vet and someone charged him like $2,000 just to give him a fentanyl patch, Okay. That doesn't help his little leg. That doesn't do any... Anyway, this nice... I'm going to say it. Mission Hills veteran, Veterinary Clinic. And there was... We went in on a Sunday. They were the only ones open. We put him in the back of the car. We waited in the parking lot. And we went in. And he charged... They charged. They looked at baby Jack. And it was so painful to carry him. Because he's a beagle. But his whole hip and leg was broken. They put a plate in his hip. And like three... Three things, little baby. Baby Jack is so well. Baby Jack is super well and loves Baby Meadow, totally. Um, but though Baby Jack, he was so sad. And so anyway, we walked in and the doctor looked at him and said, I can do the surgery. We never met this man. And Ken is like, go ahead. And you guys helped. I think it was it was reasonable, but nobody has like extra 5,000 waiting around. You know what I mean? Yes, everybody donated. It was 5,000 and something and they kept him and the surgery worked out. That guy did the surgery that day and he saved baby Jack. Baby Jack is alive and well and a good dog and he barks and he's funny and he's a chubby monkey right now and he goes up and down stairs and it's great. It's great what that vet did. Other vets were like, oh, it's going to be 20,000, 15,000, 10,000. We didn't have that. So 5,000, no, right. No, no, 5,000 and something, but you guys donated. I'm saying every single person on this channel, I mean, not every single person, but he's, uh, Baby Jack lives with Jason, Kenna, Meadow and Lila and John. They all live in the same house. And, but anyway, everybody helped with Baby Jack. They gave donations and they did whatever they could to help, which was wonderful because he was taken care of. Even five bucks, five bucks, 20 bucks, and it went straight to the vet. And Kenna was able to take care of that. And yeah, it was, no, it was so great. We were so grateful for it. I could not look at him and I could not, I could not bear to put him to sleep. Like Jason's like, if we can't fix it, we have to put him to sleep. And I'm like, I could, I, I could, I know Gypsy, right? I couldn't handle putting the dog to sleep. I have thank you so much, Debbie. No, it was so great. I have a video of Keith playing with video with baby Jack just before he died. I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't handle putting the dog to sleep. Like I wasn't going to have to do it, but I, I, I couldn't mentally, like my brain was like, I, 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 I can't. This veterinarian, it's Mission Hills veterinarian was very reasonable. I cannot remember the vet's name, but he was, you trusted him. He's like, I can do this, this, and this. 
go outside, talk to them. This will be the price. He took baby Jack right away, medicated him so he wouldn't be in any more pain. He was in pain. You couldn't even move him. Like you couldn't really, we had to pick him up and he was like, his whole, it was just dangling. Like you had to, I couldn't. So yeah, it was just so sad. So anyway, uh, thank you for that. No, it was so traumatic. But then Jason and I parked at the house. I was in the house 10 minutes to check on John who had a fever of 103.8 on the day. Um, no, they. I don't think they do cook for John. I think I take food for John. <laughs> I think John cooks his breakfast and I still feed him. <laughs> Ken has got the new baby. She's busy with that. And they're all going back to work and shit. So, you know, it's a lot. But um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, Jason parked the car. We went to check on John, who could not lift his head the day that Keith died, like 103.8 fever. Okay. Couldn't get off the couch. Couldn't move. Was so, I, we thought he was going to die. Like Jason actually said to me, we have, we have to call the doctor for dad. Cause I think he's going to die. And John said, just let him die. But he lived. Okay. So, I mean, he's fine. He got over that. But what I'm saying is I went in to check on him and set up something with his doctor and um, when I went outside, right between Jason and I, and you guys remember this, I have a picture somewhere. There was a dead rat. This was literally put on the driveway. It was not there when we got there. There was a dead rat with a, um, its legs and hips were squished. The top of its body was fine. And there was a rope around the legs and it was dropped between my car, which was the passenger side and Jason's driver's side right there. I took a picture of it. I will have to post that, but that's exactly what happened to Keith's body. What happened to baby Jack's body. That was on the driveway. Jason came out. We were in there 10 minutes. Yes. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly swear to God on the Bible. Yeah. So I know what it is. I definitely know what it is. I know what it is. It, yeah. No attorney will ever help you with anything <laughs> like that. They're not going to lose their job. Yeah. That's exactly, that's what happened. That, like, I wasn't even making that shit up. I didn't touch it. I'm just like, there's a fucking rat on the driveway. And it wasn't like a rat, like, yeah, who do, I know. But those are spirit, exactly. And they will spiritually attack you. So the more you must pray, that's all you can do. What else can you do? You can do nothing else, right? There's nothing else you can do to save yourself except pray. What, you, what, you have control over anything? What are you going to do? I went in the house to use the bathroom and, and we called John's doctor for ten, under 10 minutes and that happened. So yeah, that's the shit that they do. I experienced it. I wouldn't have believed it. I told you when I went to pick up Keith's bike, the paperwork, and I've told you the story. I'm sorry I keep repeating myself, but I go on a tangent. When I went to pick his bike up from the police station, meaning he died on a Wednesday or Thursday, whatever day the 29th was, the following Monday, I went to the police station the officer said to me, it's a spiritual war. That's what they say. Like I heard my friend heard it on the phone. I have my friend. I leave my phone on. I will carry two phones and leave a phone on. I am never going into anywhere that is an authority, a courthouse, a police station, a school without a phone on because these people are crazy and they lie. Not all of them. Officer Stacy, Detective Stacy. No, she doesn't lie. And she actually helps families of murdered kids and murdered people. She's very good. And her reputation is impeccable. And she's a kind person. And she came right to me to help me. What I'm saying is you will run into people that want to gaslight you and say, that didn't happen. I didn't say that. Did you know that they try to fuck with you? They try to make you crazy to get you to go away and shut up for whatever reason. In school, they want to target your kid because your kid isn't being indoctrinated. Okay, your kid. No, the rat was bound up with like um like a binding. It looked like it was wrapped with a plant or a tree branch around its legs. It was weird. Um, but always record, always record, always fucking record. Take an old phone. Take a strong. Take a new phone. Turn off your new phone. Keep your old phone in your pocket. Never, never, never not record. Always, always, always record because they will say they didn't say it and it'll put you in jeopardy. You are now protecting yourself. So yes, I know Aaron Carter's sister seems like they're offing everybody in the family. Exactly. After the accident, after Keith, after Jason's accident, the day right after Jason's accident, right? It wasn't a squirrel. It was a rat. It was a hundred percent a rat. And at the top of its body was fine. 
the, the bottom of his body was squished together, the legs, and bound up and it, from the waist down on the little rat. Just like Keith's body was. That's what happened to Keith's body. It's the same, that's what happened to baby Jack. You have to pray. Otherwise, you have no, to, to speak up in any level, they will kill you, kill your family, lock you in jail, whatever. You either have to make, you make that choice. There's your free will. Yeah, intimidation. It doesn't intimidate me anymore. I already buried my son. You can't, what are you going to do? What are you going to fucking do? But I'm just letting you know what they do. What they do. Yes, it's like a spell ritual. It's exactly what they do. What does a bunch of my shit all over storage mean? Well, you don't want any kind of stuff like that. The day Keith died, I got stung by five wasps. Yeah, they won't. Yeah, they, they try to sell it. They try to silence you. I don't give a fuck though. When you have your faith and you know there's God and you pray, if you die, you die. What do you think all your sons and daughters did going into war? You think that they didn't know they were going to die? They were brave and they fought for you, for us in America. They did. So... I don't know what to say. That's just the way it is. That's the way it is. So Cat Williams, anyone that speaks up, you got to ask yourself, are they aware of what could happen to them? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, he was translating. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just saying, I just heard that. So I question the country of Haiti and why people go there. They're raping the land and profiting off of all of the kids running around there. Now, I'm not saying he was. I'm saying the Clinton Foundation, um, Laura Silsbury, and the 33 children they tried to take out of there saying they were orphaned when they really had parents. I'm talking about that. I'm talking about all of that. I'm talking about the file tapes on Anthony Weiner's computer called Life Insurance that Peter Danglish had, the Humanities Minister of Canada that I blabber on about. I'm talking about that. That's what I'm talking about. The island is both ritualistic and it's a blackmail operation. And it's to, um, thank you for that. It's, it's to uh, blackmail and seduce. So think of the Jezebel spirit over there. You can fuck a kid. You can go over there and fuck a kid. You can do the, what? Like, huh? But see, we've indoctrinated people. Yeah, Hunter Biden's laptop. Thank you, Tim, for that. Thank you. I have your bracelet on, Tim. Look, I've got it on. It's mixed in. Tim sent me these beautiful turquoise um, bracelets, which I love, and a pendant. I don't have the pendant on right now. I have the bracelet on. Um, so beautiful. Thank you for that. No, he's not afraid. You cannot be afraid. You have to speak up. That's why people get raped. You know what I figured out today? And it hit me. It hit me like a ton of bricks. Thank you. I love my pink jacket. Look, y'all, it's a little crop jacket. It's really tiny. It's a, it's a, it's a boob booty jacket. Um, <clears throat> I'm so narrow up here. I just like to build up here, but not in the middle. Uh, yeah, frazzle, dri frazzle drip was on the file. Exactly. And they all know it. So listen, what I figured out today, Johnny Gosh, milk cartons. What the fuck are those milk cartons? So here I am, I'm just having my coffee in the morning and I'm thinking, what's going on with these milk cartons? Let me think, let me think. So they put the kids on there and it's like a catalog. Rachel Chandler, child handler, catalog. Wayfair, catalog, milk cartons, school kids, money, going to the school system. Ah, what else, what else? What's his name? I just forgot his name. Oh my God. His Walsh. Uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, the kid was Adam Walsh. What was the dad's name? You know who I mean? That show, right? You know the show. The uh, What is that show, you all? Uh, thank you for that. John Walsh. Thank you. So he has a daughter who is accusing him of stuff. His son died. I remember that. Anyway, he's going back on TV. I immediately clicked milk cartons, John Walsh set up. They do these things as procurement for their little fucking mind games. Okay. They love it. I know I can't stop the chat from moving. I have tried everything you guys say. I have no clue. So John Walsh. Yeah. That show America's most wanted. Thank you. He, I know she's stalking me for food. This is, I want my dinner, bitch. You're an hour late. Um, but that's, yes, milk in the, exactly. Oh my God. 
Kyron Horman. He looked like a little Keithy. That's why I love that kid. He had little glasses, little blonde hair. <sighs> I can't stand it. I can't stand that. Thank you for that, Stephanie. Thank you. I can't stand that that little boy is still missing. I just, I just can't. Yeah, John Walsh, don't watch it. Don't watch these, watch the Walsh. Don't watch these people. They have tricked you. They have lied to you. They have told you stories. They have set on, on Etsy, okay? I know, he took his daughter's kids from her. Like, if your daughter's fucked up, dude, what did you do to her, you know? List of missing kids at Walmart. Let me tell you, I'm telling tell you a quick story before I go. So I worked for um, a transitory uh, abused children's shelter, meaning they took kids in off the street under the age of 18. The ones working the streets, mainly boys because that's what was wanted in Hollywood. They had a couple of girls, but the boys were tricking. The boys were tricking. The boys were the ones with the disease. The boys were tricking all of that shit, right? So anyway, I, when I was pregnant with Keithy and I had little Jason, I drove the cars with the kids that they brought in off the streets. And the first thing they did was, which seemed like a great idea, I'm a Leo, and let's go to the hairdresser. Let's fix their purple hair, their blue hair, their dreads, their whatever, so they can get a job and work. Okay. I just thought about this. I just thought about this. So there I am driving down. Let's see. A trans is saying that he is John's son now. Oh, oh, interesting. That's interesting. I'm gonna have to research that. Um, so I literally <laughs> would drive these kids from the shelter. They're all under 18, male, female, and they would get their hair done at places like Kristoff's, okay, which is Bill Clinton's hairdresser back in the day, the one that he stopped on the tarmac whenever 2001, wherever, whenever the hell he was there, right? So I would drop these kids off and I had little two and a half year old Jason in the car with me and I was preggers with Jace, uh, with Keith because I would never work unless I could have my children with me. Yes, I've had a, yes, homemade ginger juice. That's so funny. Jason and Ken are drinking that. Thank you for that. So I've had a stuffed nose for a year. So anyway, the Kristoff's hair salon, I just thought about this. So I'm dropping the kids off. Now, what better thing when you look at a raggedy ass person coming off the street, right? Like the little kid is out there not showering, not sleeping, you know, whatever. And they go get their hair done. And they come out looking cute. And then the clientele of that particular hairdresser is full of wealthy celebrity Beverly Hills people. And there you go. There's an underage child sitting there getting their hair done. Isn't it like a walking magazine fashion show? I think I'll have dinner with that one tonight. I'm just saying it occurred to me. Don't know if that's what happened. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Seems sketchy. I just thought about it. Like that's like $500 for a haircut. Thank you for that. Thank you all. Five hundred dollars for a haircut but they're willing to do it for free for this particular business nonprofit. really are they are they are they willing to do it for free because <laughs> I don't know oh it's so fucked up it's so fucked up I used to have to check the kids in so I told you this story too back then we had cabs we did not have ubers the kids would take cabs from the cab company to go to their therapy, to their rehabs, wherever they were going, okay? They all had programs by their social workers. So when the kids came back into the shelter, if I was at work, I did aerobics with them, I cooked dinner with them, I did astrology with them, I put them to bed at night, I did outings with them, I took them horseback riding, that was my job there. Anyway, or any number of those things, talk to them and do all of that. Anyway, the cabs would come and get these kids. I would check these kids back in. So meanwhile, they're going to their shrink or whatever. And I'd be like, why do you have $400 in your purse or in your pocket, in your purse and drugs and a phone number and this and that? Yeah, because the cab driver was, the kids were going into cabs. And at that time, the cab drivers were tricks and they were paying the kids for services on the way to their therapist, their drug rehab, their whatever. That was a thing that I lived through myself. I heard that. That is what happened. 
Yes, for real. For real. Yes, that was it. I, Jason was two and a half, pregnant with Keith. Then Jimmy died. Then I quit working there. But that's that's the order of that. So that would be in that time frame, for real. But that was going on as well. And I was like, who comes to an abused children's shelter and picks up kids they know are abused and then gives them money to suck their dicks? And it was always men. It was always fucking men. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to have to do Aaron's sister. So, yeah, that's how that happened. Same thing 50 times. Yeah, well, don't listen. To, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Free Julian Assange. What did that guy do? Has he even been to court? Has he been to, let's see, so just is my son. Oh, thank you for that. Yeah, I'm going to hang upside down the opportunist. Yes, Tina, the opportunist to say the least, right? We also had a list of celebrities that fuck children. That was a thing. That was an actual thing back then. And I didn't put two and two together about the widespread, well, Paul Walker dated a young girl. So, you know, I'm just going to say that. I didn't really understand how, like, literally widespread for that that was Alice if yours the nephew that had the car accidents two in a row don't go in the vehicles don't go in the vehicles don't fuck around don't drive around be very very stay at home because that's some kind of an energy around him and usually there's a couple of warnings before an incident happens so just be mindful is all I can say can't really stop anything from happening so yeah yeah if you're dating somebody that young, I'm not trusting you. But I haven't looked into it. Yeah, all people do is fucking lie. You tell the truth and they, you know, whatever. I got called crazy because of COVID. I'm telling you, I got called crazy by friends of mine that call me crazy for what I said about Chris Cornell and tried to change my mind. Fuck off. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And if I want to change my mind, I'm going to fucking change my mind. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Anyway, you guys, I must run. I'm still trying to finish my book. Oh my God. I apologize to anybody who watches my channel who has purchased anything off my website. I am literally taking care of all the, order, all the orders and I had to shut down sales and most stuff except for the emailed reports. The emailed reports are not personal readings. And please, if it doesn't come to you directly, email me and I'm taking care of it because we've had a glitch with the software. Oh, yeah, Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew and I had that conversation when I was on his show. I like Drew, but here's what I'm going to say. It's kind of obvious if you have half a brain in your head and so you're going with the agenda because you think it's going to help you. He and I had this. He disagreed with me and I disagreed with him. I was on his show. I'm like, yeah, uh-uh, not doing it. Not doing it. Okay, have a good night. I'm going to climb ropes and hang upside down, y'all. <laughs> no, no readings. I can't take anymore. I have to finish with all the people. And I had to send money back to people, please, I apologize for that. I know it seems really insulting. I sent a shit ton of stuff back to people because I, I could not do it. I'm not willing to hire someone else to do the readings or do the charts. I'm opening back up probably in March. So I just had to do that. I'm one person and I just want to be one person. So that is the one person that I am. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I can't do it. If it gives me anxiety and I worry about you not getting your stuff, your needs met, I'd rather just pay you back what you paid me and you can go somewhere else or come back when I have more time. So yeah, that's all I could do. So I apologize, but I got so overwhelmed with the orders. I just literally apologize. I do not keep people's money. You will always get your money back for me. Always, always, always. I don't care to keep it. So, because it gives me anxiety. <laughs> it gives me anxiety. I have anxiety. Um, okay. Um, yeah. So, have a good night, you all. Have a good night. I will be seeing Super Chats Erased. I don't know. I, I'm not really looking at them. I see them and I say thank you. So, thank you all. Um, thank you all, you guys. I will see you. Going to get my exercise now. Calm my brain hanging upside down. I'm going to put my helmet on. Okay, peace out, y'all. Bye.